It's my pleasure to introduce Professor David Vai, who teaches anthropology at American University in DC. His work focuses on issues including inequality, social movements, forced displacement, refugees, US military bases abroad, race, ethnicity, gender, class, sexuality, and nationalism. He's the author most recently of a highly acclaimed um, book, The United States of War, A Global History of America's Endless Conflicts. Um, from Columbus to the Islamic State. This is the third in a trilogy of books about war and peace, um, US foreign policy and human rights. The prior books in the trilogy, perhaps some of you um, know them or read them, um, are Island of Shame, The Secret History of US Military Base um, on, on Diego Garcia, and Base Nation, How US Military Bases Abroad Harm America and the World. David, again, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for your patience, um, as you largely had to try to work through the logistics. And um, my pleasure to turn the floor over to you. Because I'm, I'm, I'm here to deliver something of a, a warning um, for those who don't wanna go click on it. Um, let's see if I can, this is um, one of the maps I, I wanted to share. This is a, a map depicting Chinese and North Korean military bases surrounding the United States, especially the Western and Southern borders, as you can see. The map also shows Russian and Iranian bases surrounding US borders. Since World War II and the Korean War, as I'm sure many of you know, the Chinese and North Korean militaries have maintained hundreds of military bases in and around the Pacific Ocean including dozens surrounding the Western and Southern borders of the United States. For at least the last 15 years, some Chinese and North Korean politicians, journalists, military officials, so-called national security analysts, and others have been using old Cold War style scare tactics to justify a military buildup of additional bases, troops, and weaponry surrounding US borders. There's a grave danger that this Chinese and North Korean buildup, of course, could deepen what are renewing cold and potentially hot wars, potentially triggering a, even a nuclear war uh, whose catastrophic damage I think we shouldn't even be able to contemplate. Oh, wait. Um, actually, I, I guess I've, I've, I think I've reserved, reversed something. Uh, what you would see if I had all my maps uh, available to me would be that, of course, the bases I just described and the troops and the weaponry um, do not exist. The map I showed you initially is a hypothetical map designed to encourage people in the United States to try to imagine what it would feel like if US borders were surrounded by Chinese and North Korean military bases, uh, as well as Russian and Iranian bases in the way that Chinese borders, North Korea's borders, Russia and Iranian borders as well are surrounded by, by US bases. Uh, the two links I'm providing here um, put two maps side by side, the hypothetical map of Chinese and North Korean bases, Russian and Iranian as well, that don't exist side by side with a map of existing actual US military bases that surround those four countries. I do this of course, um, to uh, for a number of reasons, but but above all to, to point to the, the dangers of, of the current network of US military bases abroad, um, especially those that, that encircle China and North Korea in our discussion here. Um, since around 2000, since around the beginning of the George W. Bush administration, we have seen uh, a buildup of, of US military forces in East Asia building on decades following World War II, during which the United States has maintained literally hundreds of military bases and hundreds of thousands of, of US troops in the region and specifically surrounding China and North Korea. Um, but since around 2000, since uh, around the turn of the century, in particular, we've seen a, a buildup of course in, in parts of South Korea and Japan, in Guam, uh, in Australia, which has become an increasingly important node in a global US military base network that now numbers around 800 military bases outside the 50 US states in Washington, DC, 800 bases in around 80 countries currently. Um, we've also seen, of course, uh, as many of you know, uh, the 
creation of a new South Korean military base on Jeju Island, uh, to which US forces have access, as US forces have access to all South Korean bases, um, uh, as well as a, a buildup of, of the US military presence in places including Singapore and the Philippines, the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands, Palau even. Uh, the Pentagon has also in, in the past two decades considered the construction of new bases in places including Indonesia and Malaysia, Brunei and even Vietnam, while also pushing stronger military ties with India. Um, every year, again, as, as I'm sure everyone here knows, the de facto US military presence expands during military exercises uh, and during port visits by US naval vessels. And again, just to go back to the, the, the map that's encouraging people in the United States to, to imagine how it would feel if US borders were surrounded by Chinese and, and North Korean bases. Um, I, I think we should try to imagine how it would feel to have even a single Chinese base or a single North Korean base anywhere near the borders of the United States. The most dangerous moment in the Cold War, the initial Cold War, of course, was when the Soviet Union built a single missile base in Cuba. Um, this led to the, the Cuban Missile Crisis that brought the world closer to nuclear war than it probably has ever, ever been. Um, US officials, the folks who were calling for uh, and have been calling for a, a pivot to Asia for now really two decades, um, you know, say that, that the buildup of US forces is, is to ensure stability and peace in, in the region. Uh, but of course, tell that to the Chinese government, tell that to Chinese citizens who surely don't feel secured or at peace, uh, surrounded by a growing number of US bases, troops, weaponry. Um, these bases, of course, are uh, and have been fueling tensions and only encouraging the Chinese government to build up its military forces, its military presence in the region. Um, and indeed, there's a there's a danger that that the Chinese government could uh, build more than its current collection of a grand total of one foreign military base, um, five if you count the bases on uh, human-made islands in the South China Sea. Uh, but um, in short, uh, the Chinese government, Chinese citizens are surely not reassured by this growing U.S. military presence. Uh, in in the region, and the same uh, is true for the North Korean military, of course. Um, there is, as well, a growing danger of even an accidental clash between militaries because of the increased U.S. military presence in the region, the increased uh, exercises, uh, regular daily activities, and, and the growing military presence overall. So let me just quickly point to what I see as five uh, important priorities uh, for U.S. foreign policy in a Biden administration, and five that I would uh, call on us to 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 pursue and 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 to call for uh, publicly. Um, one is that that preventing war with China, in particular, has to be uh, it, it, uh, that we have to pre prevent a war with China at all costs. The fact that people can even contemplate a war with China. The fact that U.S. military leaders, again, so-called you know, national security experts, can contemplate a war between these two nuclear armed powers is and should be frightening. We must prevent war with China at all costs. Second, and relatedly, we have to challenge the fear tactics, the scare tactics that are inflating the China threat. Um, this was a tactic employed throughout the original Cold War. Uh, the inflation of the Soviet threat was a consistent theme um, and ramped up the tensions during the initial Cold War. We have to call out that those these sorts of fear tactics um, and challenge them for what they are, uh, fear tactics. Third, um, we need to draw down and build up. By draw down, I mean we need to close unnecessary and again, dangerous US foreign military bases, especially those encircling China and North Korea. Uh, this is not a call for isolationism. We need to draw down and build up. The build up refers to building up US diplomatic presence, US diplomatic tools, US diplomacy writ large. Fourth, 
must delegitimize war as a policy option. Again, it should be frightening that after the last two decades of nearly two decades of, of disastrous US wars in Iraq, Afghanistan, and far beyond 24 countries, US combat troops have been operating in since 2001. We must, the, the, the fact that war can, can be a policy option that anyone can consider is, is a sign of how broken the, the whole system is, um, but we must continue to push to delegitimize war as uh, a policy option, as anything other than the last possible defensive action um, that any country could employ. Um, and fifth, uh, related to all the, the prior priorities, um, we must push to defund the warfare state. Um, this should be a, a policy priority for anyone working in any realm of policy, because of course, as, as uh, others have already pointed to, um, the money that has been plowed into the warfare state has come at the cost of investments in, in civilian needs. Um, and uh, the more we can do to defund the warfare state, uh, the less likely war becomes um, and the healthier uh, our lives become. Let me just leave it there.